Hi everyone, you're here because you wanna know why your laptop takes forever to boot up. Maybe your laptop's always been this way. Maybe it's only started getting slow recently. Maybe it's been getting slow for a long time and you wanna figure out what's going on and how you can speed it back up. So what are the most common reasons that a laptop would get slow over time? If you have an older laptop, the number one most common reason for you to have a slow boot up time and generally poor performance is that you do not have an SSD or solid state drive. If you purchased your laptop more than a few years ago, there's a good chance that you have an older style spindle hard drive inside your laptop. This is the older style hard drive that actually has spinning disks inside and there's a mechanical arm that has to read the information off of each disk. While reliable, this technology is slow and it takes a long time for your computer to read and write the data on the hard drive. When it comes to booting up your laptop, the speed of your hard drive is one of the most important factors because it has to load up everything that it needs from the Windows 10 operating system. The second most common reason for a laptop to boot up slowly is Windows Update. In most cases, Windows Update actually works in the background. It'll download the updates that it needs and it'll install them at a predetermined time. But with laptops, you're usually closing it down when you're finished for the day and when you open it back up, Windows takes that as its cue to go ahead and install those updates. So while you may think that your boot up is taking a long time, it might actually be the Windows 10 update that's happening and causing you to wait. If you see this image when you're booting up, that's what it is. The third most common reason for a laptop to slow down over time is that there are a lot of programs being loaded at boot. This could be anything from Skype, to a game launcher, to your virus scanner, anything that's being booted up in the beginning when you load Windows and that's running in the background as you use your computer. Over time, you might be surprised to see how many of these programs find their way into your startup and are slowing your computer down not only during boot, but also during everyday but also during everyday tasks. So now that we know why laptops tend to run slowly, especially over time and if you have an older laptop, let's look at the nine best ways to improve your Windows 10 laptop boot time and we'll go through these in order of what I consider to be the best return on your time. And in every case here, you won't have to spend any money to implement these fixes with the possible exception of a couple at the end but those are completely optional and it depends on what you need and what your situation is. So number one, make sure that Windows is up to date. To do that, get into your Windows desktop and go to the search bar, type Windows Update. This will open the Windows Update settings and you'll see here up at the top that it'll tell you if any updates are available, the last time it checked, and what's waiting to happen. Right now, I actually have the 11 2020 update pending on my laptop because I don't use it very often, and it's asking me to go ahead and install it now. I have my updates paused so that it won't update unless I tell it to. So it's been sitting there shut down waiting for me to open it back up and let it install. So make sure that all of your windows are up to date and you can go ahead and ask it to check again manually to ensure that you have everything ready to go. Windows update's important because it does introduce hot fixes for bugs within the system and if you have a brand new laptop with new hardware, making sure that Windows 10 is completely up to date will help you with performance. If you're finding value in this video so far, please consider dropping a like on the video because it'll help me out with the YouTube algorithm and help put this video in front of more people to help them out as well. Next, you wanna check to make sure that your laptop is free of any malware or viruses. These things can get embedded in your system and slow down performance. And it's really just good best practice to have some sort of virus protection on your system, whether it's a free option or a paid option. Personally, I like to download Malwarebytes and keep the free version on my computer at all times. I run it when I wanna run it and I disable it when I'm not using it so that it doesn't soak up any resources in the background. I'll provide a link below to check out Malwarebytes if you'd like. There's a paid option that does come with extra features, but I personally normally use the free version. When you download Malwarebytes, you'll also get an option to get a free 14-day trial, and you don't even have to provide your email. Go ahead and click in to start your free trial, and you can get into the software. You'll see here that there's a big button in the middle that says scan. Go ahead and hit the scan button, and wait a little while for it to scan your system. At the end, it'll tell you if it found any malware and to go ahead and give you options to quarantine and remove it from your system. Once that's done, we'll move on to the next step. The next big thing that you're gonna to need to check out is what programs are starting up when you boot your laptop. Now, like I mentioned before, it's common for new programs to set themselves to start on boot because they want something running in the background. If it's a virus scanner, it wants to be monitoring your files in the background. If it's a game launcher, it wants to be monitoring for updates so that it can download them in the background. You get the point. But the problem is if you have a bunch of these programs running in the background and they're all loading on your boot, 
then it's gonna slow down the amount of time it takes to turn on your laptop from start to finish. To disable some of these programs, we're gonna go into the task manager. Simply press all control delete on your laptop and it'll bring up the task manager button. If your task manager doesn't look like this and instead looks like this, you're gonna to wanna to hit the button down at the bottom that says more details so that you can see more of what's going on and you have the tabs that we're gonna use in the next step. As you can see here, I have several apps running, including Malwarebytes that we talked about before, Steam, and a couple of other things. What we wanna do is go up here to the Startup tab. These are all the programs that are gonna load during our boot to make sure that they're available right when we finish loading up the computer. If we take a quick look at the list, we can see that there are quite a few items on here, several of which we don't need right when we boot up the computer. I'm gonna go through this quick list real quick and disable some. I'm gonna disable the Logitech Download Assistant. I'm gonna disable Microsoft OneDrive because I don't use it. I'm gonna disable Skype because I don't use it. And even though Steam is currently listed as enabled, I'm gonna go ahead and disable it as well because I don't need it loading up when I boot my system. If I'd like to play a game or do something else with Steam, I can always load it up later on, but this way it won't slow down my boot up time. There's even a nifty feature in the task manager. If you look up in the top right of this box, it tells you your last BIOS boot time. Take a note of this because you can actually check and see if your performance increases the next time that you restart your computer. The next thing we're gonna do is check our power plan settings. If you're on a laptop, Windows 10 handles the performance of your computer a little differently than a desktop computer that's always plugged in, especially if you're unplugged and working off of battery life. If you're working at home, you're probably gonna have your laptop plugged in, but these settings are gonna come into play no matter what option you choose. What we're gonna do is go to the Windows search bar and type in power plan. Open up this menu and you'll see that you can choose or customize a power plan. Right now it's set to battery saver. I'm gonna choose the balance plan, then I'm gonna go into change plan settings. From here, we're gonna go into change advanced power settings. Here you see that we can change a few more things that aren't in the normal menus. The first thing I'm gonna select is the processor power management. I wanna look at the maximum processor state and I wanna make sure that on battery and plugged in, it's set to 100%. Sometimes power plan options can set the maximum processor state to 50 or 75% when you're on battery to preserve battery life. We wanna have this on at 100% so that we get that performance throughout our boot. For the next step, we're gonna go back to the power plan settings, but this time we're gonna go over to the left and we're gonna select choose what the power button does. In this screen, you can see a few options and they're probably grayed out on your system. What we're looking for is the fast startup option. And you can see that it's actually turned on by default and grayed out so that I can't change it. Now, fast startup can actually reduce your boot time, but in certain circumstances or in certain devices, it can slow things down. So one thing you can try is disabling fast startup, restarting your computer and seeing if it makes a difference, then turning fast startup back on and seeing if it's made another difference. Comparing the two, you can see which option is gonna work best for your system. Long story short, in most cases, you should have it on. To change the setting, you'll need to click on the link that says change settings that are currently unavailable, which is administrator permission. Once you've clicked that, you'll be able to turn off and on the fast startup. And again, I recommend turning it off and restarting your computer and then turning it back on again and checking to see which option works best for you. The next thing we're gonna do is change our boot timings and generally just make sure that our boot is set up to go as quickly as possible within Windows itself. Go back to the search bar and type msconfig. It's gonna open up your system configuration app. From here, you'll see that it's on normal startup, which we will keep, but we wanna to move to the boot tab. First thing we're gonna check is the timeout. Now, it might show zero seconds on here. If you try to change it, it'll actually tell you that three seconds is the minimum. If you have it at zero, don't worry about changing it. If it's higher than three, go ahead and change it down to three so that the wait time during the BIOS portion of boot up will be as short as possible. You can also select the option for no GUI boot if you'd like, and it can save a couple of seconds as well. We'll click apply to make sure these settings are in effect. The next tab is services, and I'm not gonna go in too much detail into this video, but, but a lot, a lot of, times of times there are some things, things that you can disable, disable in the services menu that can, that can help out with, with overall performance and sometimes, sometimes shave a second or two off, off your boot time. time. I'll make, I'll a, make separate a separate video, video for that, for that and link to it above. above. The last thing I wanna point out for the newer laptops, even if you have an SSD hard drive, make sure that it is not completely full. The way that Windows 10 operating system works, it needs some room left on your hard drive so that it can move files around and, op and have optimum performance when you're doing normal tasks. As you can see here, my laptop has 3.41 gigabytes out of the possible 117, which is still enough even though there's not a lot of space 
left. But if you're getting warnings from Windows 10 that you were running out of disk space and maybe you only have a couple hundred megabytes of space left, you're gonna run into some performance issues because Windows 10 is gonna have to move those files around more slowly and that can actually increase your boot time as well, especially at the end of the boot sequence when Windows 10 is finishing up. Now, if you have an older laptop, I have two more things that I would recommend that you look into to improve your boot time and overall computer performance. The first thing is you should clean up your registry, delete temporary files, etc. Now this is not some ad for a piece of software that's gonna increase your performance 1000% on your laptop just by installing the program and blah, 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 blah. That's not what I'm talking about. In, in most cases, those programs are not gonna actually do what they say they're gonna do, and in other cases, it can cause issues. But what I will say is that if you have a laptop that's five years old or even older, and you've been using it pretty consistently over that time period, you're likely gonna have a little bit of crap sitting around in your operating system files, your registry, and other places. And those things can actually slow down your boot time and your overall performance as well. This is where I would actually recommend checking out checking out an overall system cleaner like CC Cleaner, which I've used in the past and had no issues with, and it can help sort out any old registry issues that you might have from uninstalling old programs. And while it's not gonna be a miracle cure, I've personally seen performance improvements on an older PC or laptop by using a registry cleaner like this. I'll leave a link in the description below for one that I've used and trusted over the years. Now, the biggest single way that you can decrease your boot time and make your computer run faster overall especially if you have an older laptop, is to upgrade that old traditional hard drive to a new SSD. While this is not a free option, it is the best option for speeding up your PC, and if you have never used a computer with an SSD on it, you will notice the difference immediately. This is also a technical upgrade, and depending on your skill level and your particular laptop, you may or may not be able to perform this upgrade easily or cheaply. What I would recommend is searching for your particular laptop model with SSD upgrade in Google and see what pops up. You might find that you have an easy kit to use to upgrade your hard drive. And if you're somewhat tech savvy, it might even be an easy upgrade for you to do yourself. In most cases, SSDs are smaller than their traditional hard drive counterparts. So it's not usually difficult to fit them inside the laptop if there was already a hard drive in place. Remember that you should perform all of these steps in a row where it makes sense for you because while each of these steps should improve your boot time, none of them are gonna be a miracle on their own. So take this list, go down in order, and make sure that you've done all these things, then check and see if your boot time has improved. If you've enjoyed the video today, please consider liking it so that it will help me out with the YouTube algorithm, and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this with how-tos, tips and tricks, and just generally helping you figure out how to use your laptop and computer more easily. If there are any questions or comments you have that weren't addressed in the video, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll respond to it personally and maybe even make a video about it in the future as well. Thanks.